here. I think that it's quite impossible that what we cannot do today, it was very easy and during a medieval period. Well, the carbon-14 dating uh, remains a huge issue. Um, uh, one of the reasons is um, because the carbon-14 dating says that the shroud is 700 years old. If that's the case, it can't possibly be first century. Well, then how do you reconcile all the other evidence that says that it is ancient and that it is uh, uh, first century or that it did or, or originate in Israel? I mean, there are so many uh, other streams of evidence that simply cannot be reconciled with a medieval date. And the question is, well, can they both be true? Well, they can both be true if, or if for some reason, what they dated is not representative of the entire shroud. What if, what if something is wrong with the one sample that they, uh, that they took? Because, you know, they were supposed to take multiple samples, but they didn't. They only took one. And so now we have the most significant carbon dating test of the 20th century hanging on one sample. In recent years, speculation about the age of the shroud has been raised to new levels, along with the hackles of some researchers. At issue is one simple question. Are some parts of the shroud older than others? This possibility was suggested at the Sindonay 2000 Worldwide Congress. Authors M. Sue Benford and Joseph Marino put forth the notion that a 16th century invisible patch had skewed the 1988 carbon-14 test on the sample from the Shroud of Turin. Their idea was backed by what seemed to be solid historical research, but the whole notion was immediately rejected as being technically impossible. At this point, another scientist, one of the original STIRP team, became interested. Like others who had closely examined the Shroud, he too was very skeptical of the whole idea of reweaving. So Raymond Rogers set himself the task of discovering whether or not scientific analysis could resolve the issue once and for all. In an interview given in 2005, he unveiled his results. Those who claimed reweaving was impossible were wrong. So I got out the Ross samples and I got out some of the, uh, the shroud samples and I went to work again. And lo and behold, in less than an hour, I knew that, that the Ross sample was totally different in chemical composition than the, uh, the main part of the shroud. And then the shocker that really shook me up in, in looking at the Ross threads, I hit this one that was an end-to-end -end splice. And that's exactly the sort of thing that Benford and Marino were talking about in this invisible reweaving. After coming to this conclusion, Ray called me one day and said flat out, Tom, there is no scientific wiggle room. While some scientists may continue to disagree, it would seem the results of the carbon-14 dating of the shroud appear to have been invalidated. Of course, even if the shroud can be proven to be a first century burial cloth, that's not what we're looking for. As modern day representatives of the Apostle Thomas, we seek proof it is the burial cloth of Christ. Does such evidence exist? Will it provide us with the most important evidence of all, evidence for the resurrection 